how God helps men. Let's look at this very quickly. How God helps men. I've said it here in summary, but I want you to listen now and learn. Please, you need to get this. You need to get this. Number one, the first way God helps men is by showing mercy. The first way God helps men is by showing mercy. So that every time you say, help me, oh God, I'm giving you intelligence to know the scope of what you are asking for and how help is delivered. How God helps men. Number one, God helps every man at all by showing mercy. Now, the concept of God's mercy uh, is a very broad concept. I don't have the liberty to teach on it extensively. I've done many teachings uh, on mercy, but I'll try to summarize a bit. The mercy of God is hinged on, number one, the nature of God, that God is love. You must understand the basis for his mercy. The mercy of God is hinged on two things. Please listen. Number one, the nature of God. Number two, the fallen nature of man. These are two concepts you have to understand. Else you may never understand the mercy of God. That there is a, a contrast between the nature of God and the nature of man. The nature of God according to scripture is that he is love. The Bible says God is love. First John chapter 4 and verse 8. I'm showing you how God helps men by administering his mercy. God is love. Not that he has love, not just that he shows love, but that God is love. How about man's nature? Man's nature is a very interesting description. The Bible puts it very powerfully in Psalm 51 and verse 5. Psalm 51 and verse 5. He said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. This was the verdict of the psalmist. Are we together? He's contrasting the nature of God. The Bible tells us furthermore about God that he's gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger and rich in love. But you contrast that against the nature of man. So God is all loving. God is all merciful. God is all caring. He is father and man uh, by his nature, especially the fallen nature. The Bible already concludes that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That not even the best of our righteousness by ourselves is able to help us. Who is learning tonight? So it's very important for you to understand that the concept of mercy is hinged on God's love versus the inability of man to help himself being shaped in iniquity and shaped in sin. What does it mean to show mercy? I'm explaining this for your understanding. I'll give you two definitions very quickly for tonight. Number one, mercy means compassionate treatment of those in need or distress. Mercy means compassionate treatment of those in need or those in distress. Compassionate treatment of those in need or those in distress. Are we learning? Number two, mercy means refraining from harming or punishing offenders. Mercy means refraining from harming or punishing offenders. That means when you are deserving of punishment by reason of an offense, when you are granted pardon, are we together? It is called mercy. So number one, compassionate treatment of those who are in need or distress. Number two, refraining from harming or punishing offenders. In fact, mercy extends to showing care. Showing care and providing succor. Showing care and providing succor. Or you may say relief. Showing care and providing succor. All of these definitions form our understanding of mercy. So when we say God helps men by showing mercy, we mean that he treats us with compassion when we are in the time of distress, knowing our frame, that he has refrained and he keeps reframing from harming or meting out the punishment due our sin, due our carelessness, due our limitations. And then number three, that he shows us care and provides succor even when we have need. Someone say mercy, Lord. 
cry it now with understanding. Say, mercy, Lord. Mercy is not for sinners. It's for those who acknowledge that they are incapacitated. Most times we leave the concept of mercy just for sinners. No. For as long as you live, for as long as you walk with God, if the mercy factor is taken away, you will not be able to relate with God. Are we together? Because the very concept of covenants is such that when you default, there should be a penalty sometimes immediately. Mercy. Compassionate treatment in distress, refraining from meting out harm or punishment to offenders, and then showing care and providing succor. So when God forgives, when God withholds punishment, when God withholds calamity that should befall you by reason of your carelessness, sin, or whatever it is, is because he has shown you mercy. I'm praying for someone. In the name of Jesus for you or for your family for you or for your business for you or for your spouse for you or for your children every accusation in the realm of the spirit that wants to empower hell to met out judgment upon your life we decree and declare that a standard of mercy rises in your favor a standard of mercy rises in your favor a standard of mercy rises in your favor in the name of Jesus please be seated I have taught and you've heard me teach this extensively that the foundation for mercy is compassion. You cannot show a man mercy until you are first compassionate. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity that he was in every way tempted like us and yet without sin. God shows us mercy because he is compassionate. What does it mean to be compassionate? To show concern for the sufferings, to show concern for the misfortunes of others. So mercy, write this down, mercy is a fruit or a byproduct of compassion. Never forget that. Anytime you want to ask mercy from a person, first verify whether that person is compassionate. The Bible talks about the woman in Luke 18 who went to cry for vengeance for some wrong that had been done by her adversary the bible describes the judge as a man who did not fear god nor regard men that was a man without compassion and for as long as his heart was not touched he remained adamant in communicating help but one time his heart became softened and to the degree to which it was softened he was willing to help that woman are we learning now ah i thank god you see, as God, even though God was mighty and is mighty, he truly, listen carefully, he needed a human experience to be able to relate with the frailty of men. And so he wore a body. He never cried as God. He never slept as God. He was never weak as God. No man could bring an accusation against him as God. Are we together? He never needed support as God. He never needed anybody to help him as God. But when God became a man, that was a mystery. This is why Jesus today seated as a man still makes intercession. Even though everything is finished. Because he knows when he walked upon the earth, he saw the viciousness of fallen men who were under the grip of Satan. When Jesus came as a man, even though he was God incarnate, God as a man cried, God as a man was hungry. God as a man was frustrated. I like the Bible because of its truthfulness. It reveals the humanity of Jesus without hiding anything. When Jesus cries, it will tell you Jesus wept. When Jesus was hungry, the Bible says, and he was unhungered, straight, he was hungry. To the point that he caused a fig tree for not delivering fruit, even though it was not the time of figs. Jesus entered the temple and flogged men who, drove them out the zeal of the Lord consumed him he called them brood of vipers he was angry the zeal of heaven consumed him Jesus showed compassion it pained him that men that he had trusted betrayed him as a man so today when he sits at the right hand of the father and he sees us doing what we are doing he says father forgive them not just for they know not i know the pain i know what it means to walk upon the earth and be given a mandate and be called beelzebub 
Therefore, grant this man of God strength. Therefore, grant this mother strength. Are we together now? I know what it means to be rejected. So while, when, 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 when you walk with God, one of the things you drink of is his compassion. I told you this last week. If you truly grow in Christ, you must taste of his compassion towards people. It is the reason why God never starts with people above. He starts from the ground. You know why? Because there are certain experiences you need. Today, when someone cries, you remember that once upon a time, you never paid a house rent and they embarrass you. And from that story, you still have the memory. You will now be able to reach out and help people. I'm explaining to you what I mean by mercy is the fruit of compassion. So when you want God and men to show you mercy, what you really need to pray for is that God should bring to you compassionate people. To the degree to which you have compassionate people within your space, that is the degree to which you will find mercy. I'm praying for you. Where you have been surrounded by wicked people with a heart of stone, in the name of Jesus, may God replace them with compassionate people. Who is learning tonight? Mercy is a fruit of compassion, a product of God's nature. Now listen carefully. Compassion is a feeling. The, the action you take in response to compassion is what we call mercy. Mercy is an action word. Are we together? Yeah. You show mercy. You communicate mercy. Mercy is an action word. You can't say I feel mercy. You can feel compassion. But when you respond to your compassion, the act that is a proceed of compassion is called mercy. Someone say mercy, Lord. Mercy. Shout it like you need it. Mercy, so the first way God shows men help is by showing them mercy. The psalmist said it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Are we together? How many of you today have received results beyond your prayer life? You know that what you enjoy is beyond your prayer life. There are many of you who have encountered men and looking at the updated version of you now, the bad attitude you displayed in their presence, you should not have been favored, but God looked beyond it. When you see the extent of God's mercy in your life, it calls for praise. It calls for worship. Sometimes when some of us get on our knees and tell God thank you, it's because we have seen how frail we are and we've seen the mighty power of God move through frail vessels. I remember in one of our conferences this year, I can't, re I, I can't recall which of them now, I, I, I was just a few minutes before I would go up the stage and I was almost in tears. It was like a rewind of my life. Everything happened within minutes. when you take the time to think of the mercy of god in your life that song says when i think of the mercies of jesus and all he has done for me my very soul shall shout hallelujah praise god for sin God that when you were insulting the prayer language of tongues God ignored you because he saw the sincerity of your heart thank God that when you were cursing an anointed man in your room quietly God looked beyond you because if the anointing on that man had descended on you you would have been surprised thank God for the times when you sat down and cursed your helpers in secret and God still insisted that they bless you are we together now there are many of you today who by merit are not deserving of the place and the things that God has given you God took you from nowhere that some of you men favored you even beyond what they did to their own biological children they still have their children alive but for some reason they decided to hold your hands and they will tell you I don't know what it is about you and at that point you had not known anything about favor so you can't say it's favor it's not favor to you it's mercy are we together man of god remember when you were invited to preach when you didn't even know what you were saying they still tolerated the nonsense you were saying on stage hoping you will grow 
Now you, you don't even want to listen to your messages of yesterday because almost 80% is rubbish. <laughs> Mercy. Are we together? Someone say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let me tell you the truth. Because of this revelation that I have, most times in my place of prayer, I spend quality time telling God, thank you. Do you know? I had to ask God to help me and I'm being honest with you here because sometimes I even feel guilty asking for things. I look at my life today and I say, will I be honestly fair if I still ask God for things? God has done things in my life today that in many lifetimes I would not tell him thank you enough. The way God helps men, the way my God is helping you this night. For some of you, you have never, aside from salvation, from sin, truly, you have never really experienced the mercy of God. You know why? Because you have educated yourself to think mercy is for sinners. And since I am now saved, I don't need the mercy of God again. Maybe I need wisdom. Maybe I need anointing. Let me tell you, in this kingdom, the higher you rise, you will hold mercy like a treasure. Because a time comes in your life where no other thing can open a door for you. You stand in front of that door, your knowledge is frail, connections frail, everything frail. You have to bring the key of mercy to say, mercy, open this door for me. Hmm. Hallelujah. Do you believe what you are learning tonight? Someone shout again, show me mercy. Now you will see the wisdom in blind Bartimeo. He didn't know so much. Never had the opportunity to join people in Jesus' lecture. But the one thing he knew was the power of God's mercy. And he said, thou son of David. He didn't say heal me. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. What if it's not healing I need? Just because I'm blind does not mean I need healing. He said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Let me tell you the truth. The prayer that God should show you mercy is a very powerful prayer. It takes ignorance to just... Every time you feel you don't need the mercy of God, I am telling you, you are in a realm of pride and confusion because the vicissitudes of life, it will place a demand on you. Your obedience sometimes because you are human. If every door was to open entirely based on your prayer life, if everything was to work entirely based on your obedience, you will not even go far. I am a testimony of God's mercy. Koinonia is a testimony of God's mercy. It's not a license to not take responsibility, but to know that even at the best of our obedience, there is more that God has done. It's like, if you send me with 100,000, or let's say 10,000 Naira to the market, and I bring back a truckload of goods, does that add up? Now, you didn't send me to go and steal. You sent me to go and buy. You had something. But for whatever reason, something happened in the market. And I returned back with bags of rice, bags of vegetables. You will ask me what happened. Because with respect to the amount you carried there, it didn't add up. This is what mercy does. That you carry your little faith, little obedience, little consecration, little love for Jesus. And with sincerity of heart, you present it before the Lord. And say, Lord, this does not add too much. But can you bring glory to your name out of this? He will pick it up and say, let me show you what. You know, he will add something to that equation. And you will do big things for Jesus. Things that would dumbfound people. Is the reason why with all due respect, I tell you. When men salute us and clap for us, I'm not really overly excited. Because I'm the one who knows the part of the equation that is a function of obedience and a part of the equation, a large part of it, that is the mercy of God. I'm sure we'll sing that song at the end of this, this service. That, that, that case string song is needed in this kind of sermon. Someone say mercy. mercy. Shout it again, say mercy. mercy. For those of you who are still full of yourself and full of your ability, save Johnny. I hope that you learn early enough. That you can wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Is that in your Bible? It says some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will trust in the name of our God. There are times that your horses are ready, your armory is ready, your intelligence is ready, you will still be defeated. And if you think that does not work, ask the nation of Israel. 
You think if they were to fight man to man, they would be a match for the nation of Israel? A vast army, the best of their army, including Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh decided to come and fight. But when God decided to show mercy, a frail people still complaining, a frail people still grumbling. It's not like the people were saying, Lord, we worship you. Thank you for mercy. They were busy insulting Moses. You better know what to do with us now. God would have said, for doubting me, you will perish here. And said, no, leave them. You are the leader over them. Go and tell the Red Sea, part heater and teether, stretch forth your rod. And while the nation of Israel, they were, you know, while they were moving on dry, you thought they would say, oh, thank you, Jesus. They were still there until they crossed and now they started complaining again. Moses, what are you going to do? They are still coming, oh. Tells you how humans are, right? When you understand the mercy of God, you will be patient with men. Because every time men misbehave towards you, they should remind you of you. They should remind you of you before God. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Someone again shout mercy. mercy. It's a powerful prayer that you should pray for the remaining part of your life. Show me mercy. When you get up in the morning and you thank the Lord, before you thank him for tea and bread, thank him for mercy first. Leave tea, leave bread. The hand to hold the tea and bread is as a result of God's mercy. I told you, I have seen very healthy people who have no reason being sick by reason of their adherence to, um, you know, the things that make for diet and nutrition. But mysteriously, some of those people, perhaps even following right now in hospitals, diagnosed of mysterious things. For someone, perhaps you smoked for half of your life, drank for the remaining half, and got born again in January. And yet you go for tests and they say your body is like that of a baby. My brother, if you ever think it's because you drank water or you drank, uh, you stopped drinking minerals or whatever it is, you are joking. You should kneel down and say mercy. Thank you. Thank you for mercy. Do you believe what you are learning? Number two, the second way God helps men. Who is learning tonight? The ministry of men. The ministry of men. The second way God helps us. Ah. Ebenezer, 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 my soul of help, only you are my help. Ebenezer, Please be seated. I love you.